Aboard a replica of the ship that won the Battle of Lake Erie during the War of 1812, about 40 crew members of the U.S. Brig Niagara use ageless maritime skills to navigate between modern-day ports while both preserving and presenting the ship's history. U.S. military history is, uh, is a, uh, uh, it's, it's the ship's burden, it's her cargo. Lovely. Nice way of sailing. Total different sailing than sailing sloops. At 110 feet long and with over 10 miles of total lines, Niagara is the largest wooden square sailing ship in the country. She also boasts the largest professional sailing crew of any sailing ship in the United States. This pro crew interacts with trainees to essentially make the ship a floating classroom. We're teaching people how to become effective mariners on board, uh, to be uh, sailors, to help sail the ship as part of the crew. Well, while it's coordinated, so you have to work together as a team. Successfully sailing the ship entails a necessary element of mutual respect and trust among the crew. If it's just thinking about others, so think of the model ship, shipmate self. Safety is always emphasized and response training routinely practiced. There's a great deal of training involved uh, for uh, uh, safety training and uh, uh, not just how to climb a loft, but how to operate life rafts and exposure suits and uh, what to do in a man overboard or a fire or other types of emergency flooding. So there's quite a bit of training that goes along with it. Duties of the crew involve more than just sailing the ship. Living aboard this 19th century maritime environment is an education and a challenge in and of itself. Galley duty, which is doing dishes and stuff. Um, helm, which is steering the ship. Lookout, which is looking out for different ships that are um, around us and reporting them back to the con. Cleaning the ship and maintenance, because it's a wooden ship, so painting and stuff like that. Time is also spent stowing lines, tying knots, lashing ropes, leather working. You can see it's quite involved. Tool making and controlling the persistent flies. Not all the work happens on or below the decks. At about 100 feet aloft in the sail rigging, there are a number of other tasks to complete, and the view is simply breathtaking. Here aloft is fantastic. Uh, it's uh, exhilarating with the wind blowing through the sails, and it's just you and uh, the wind and the sails doing their job. It's just uh, quite a surreal, peaceful moment. I can imagine at night with the stars would be even better. Hard at work, the crew always makes time to enjoy the voyage as well as the good company. <laughs> and then, of course, there's always the good food to look forward to. The galley provides three meals a day, all cooked on a wood burning stove. When not eating on the deck, the sleeping area of the berth deck converts into the dining area. This year's voyage was additionally fueled by an appetite for a healthy sense of competition. And then after we've sheeted home, then we take the yard and we raise it all the way up by pulling on the halyard. 240 to 250 miles to go, and um, the breeze is still saying southwest five to 15 knots. The tall ship fleet departing Duluth raced across Lake Superior, vying for bragging rights at the finish line. How fast are we going? 10 knots. Is that good? Oh yeah, that's super good. We're on course now for the finish line. 10 knots on three. One, two, three. 10, Ten knots! knots! In the end, the Niagara took a solid second place in the challenge. But the real prize isn't in winning, it's in the transition of coming on board as a passenger 
and finishing as a mariner. It's through that experience of becoming a useful member of the crew on board that people gain um, uh, a little more self-confidence. Uh, uh, it, it enriches their character, but by the time they finish up after several weeks, there's a sense of uh, self-confidence self -confidence and accomplishment and something they can be proud of and having experienced uh, on board. The U.S. Brig Niagara, among other tall ships, will hopefully return to Duluth in as early as three years. We had a great time while we were in Duluth. We always do. We had a, just a phenomenal time. We can't wait to come back.